In this video, I'm going to show you the best offense in Madden 22. Now, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, we are talking about the Trips Tight End, and I just released my Trips Tight End Offensive eBook. Uh, my Trips Tight End Offensive eBook basically features a significant amount of route combos and play calls that you can use out of the Detroit playbook or the New England playbook that you're going to find are absolutely incredibly effective against the meta defenses that you're going to be facing. So if you want to get my Trips Tight End Offensive Guide, I'm going to put a link to that down in the description and in the comment section. Just a quick reminder, if you join my Patreon, um, that is just simply 10 bucks a month and you can get access to every single guide that I will release over the course of the Madden 22 season while your subscription is active. So let's jump into the video. I'm super pumped and jacked up to share this route combo for uh, with you. And that is the PA shot wheel. I think the PA shot wheel is probably the most underrated play in the trip side in formation. Um, not very many people run it. This used to be a very popular play back in Madden 19. And I think most people sleep on it, especially in this year's game. So I'm going to give you two setups today that are going to be absolutely incredible. First one is going to be very good, specifically if your opponent likes to run some cover two uh, and they like to put 30-yard cloud flat. So they like basically double flat and they're going to play 30-yard cloud flats, okay? This is a great play for that. All we're going to do is we are going to double team the right side of the screen guy. We're going to put the tight end on a delay fade. And then we're going to take that circle receiver and we're going to put him on a slant or a drag. I personally prefer the slant. And then if you have Hot Route Master or Outside Apprentice, you can put that outside guy on a post. I actually do like the post that he's on, so I'm going to leave him on that. And what you're going to see here is we're going to stand right here, and then we're going to roll out of the pocket, and this crosser is going to get absolutely open. Now, really, really, really important point that I want to make real quick is that this crosser um, will get over a 30-yard cloud flat. Why do I know this? Well, number one, because I've labbed it, I've ran it in weekend league and done very well, um, but also because of the fact that this, if you take a look here, we're on the 20 yard line, okay? We're on the 20 yard line. So um, 30 yards is to the 50. You saw that that crosser was reached to the 40, okay? And if I just have time, and again, good old shit, I should, you can stay in the pocket too. You don't have to roll out with this. If they contain you, you can just stay in the pocket. That's fine. Um, it's really not a big deal. Um, but let me, let me click off here and get on this guy. Um, so anyway, what you're gonna see, I'm gonna stay in the pocket. You can roll out if you want. And then you see how open he is. And see where that gets to? That's a 40 yard crosser. And that's why I like it so much because it gets over 30 yard cloud flats. The other thing that I like is this is basically Trips Tight End's version of PA boot over if you think about it. You know, it's pretty much the same routes. As you see here, you, you break down, you can go to the delay fade. The delay fade is so good. But the crosser is so much better from trips tight end because it gets over the 30 yard cloud, like not even close. There's not even, there's not, it's not even close that this crosser is going to get over the top. And I promise you, they're going to leave it 99% of the time. They're not going to cover it. And that's why I like it so much. So that is PA shot wheel. Um, as far as how does it go against other coverages, like maybe cover four drop. Well, this is why I like to keep that post. What you're going to see here is that outside quarter from cover four drop is going to basically bail back right there at the very last second. And I'm going to be able to throw that crosser. So let me show you that one more time. I got a little bit of a bad animation. And again, what I'm talking about is that post because I have that post on the field. You're going to see that this uh, at the last second, he'll go back. So I need a down and away pass lead. Brady's not throwing the ball too well for me, but that that and Gilmore is really, really, really good. But you will be able to hit that. Again, most people, when they run cover four drop, they're going to run it with two hard flats on the outside, and then they're going to try to just basically let those let those quarter zones uh, kind of defend everything else. But again, down and away pass lead. There you see it. Pretty easy little play right there. And again, the cover four drop, you know, it's it's okay. Um, you know, we're going to bomb cover four out of this formation nine times out of ten anyway. Um, you have to remember, cover four drop, they're not going to be able to cover the delay fade. They're not going to be able to cover a lot. But again, here, just pass it down and away. Click on. There you see that Scotty Miller would catch the ball. That's why I recommend to put deep out of lead on that guy. But that cross is still getting super, super deep. Now, cover three for a, uh, for a second. Let me show you this against cover three. So I'm just going to go uh, nickel two four five. Obviously, you're not going to get a ton of pressure. Why? Because you have seven-man protection. 
right? You're blocking everything. So against cover three here, you're going to see it's even worse. It's going to get wide open against cover three, okay? But that crosser gets wide open. Now, the other thing I want to quickly hit on about cover two is that this play is basically a bomb against cover two. So how it's going to work, which everyone's running cover two. So what you're going to see here, if you watch that square receiver, I'm just going to pass lead him up. And a lot of times he'll get over the top. Now, that time he didn't, um, but a lot of times he will. Let me show you just like the pinch two. Everybody's running pinch two. It's probably, an, I run a lot too. Uh, I think it's probably the best blitz in the game. What you're going to see is against this, you're going to be able to pick up the pressure, and then you're going to be able to make a throw on the sideline for the crosser. Okay, so you can pick up the pressure really good out of this out of this formation. Now, again, if they go if they go to three three five wide, just uh, want to show this real quick. Let me see what you'll see here is if they go to three three five wide. If you have enough time in the pocket and you're rolling out, you're going to see here. You know, it, see how he kind of sits on the crosser and then he goes back. So you're going to have kind of both of them options. Um, again, if they're usering, if they're usering the crosser, um, that's where this really becomes lethal because if they're usering the crosser, normally this post will get open. I'll show you that real quick. This is why I like the slant because the slant, for whatever reason, kind of dumbs this out. But what you'll see, pass lead that up. And it's real tight window. Um, it actually works a little bit better with Gunslinger, but just trust me, you can throw that a lot, um, a lot more than you might think you could throw that. Uh, I've thrown a lot of touchdowns on this play against cover two. If they're going to run cover two, obviously you can hit your crosser too. Obviously you can hit your crosser too. And that was like a 45-yard dot. I mean, just lasers, right? Um, I told you I'd give you two setups. So the second setup that I like to run out of this um, is a little bit more of a uh, five out type of uh, five out type of concept and basically what we're going to do is we're just going to put the running back on an end route we're going to delay fade the tight end and we're going to put the circle receiver on a drag essentially this is mesh post or double post if you will right we have our two quick high lows on the left and right and then we also have um, our crosser now the reason I like this uh, setup a lot is because it, you still have six man protection, so you're still gonna be able to blip, pick up a lot of pressures. But now you have a, a flat route on that back side um, to the running back, so it forces them to have to double flat on both sides, really, to be able to stop everything you're gonna do. And then, obviously, they're still not gonna be able to stop everything. Why? Because while they're, you know, they're, you know, they're, um, um, they're, they're 30 yard flats, not gonna be able to stop with the crosser. So. You know they're gonna put, you're gonna put them in kind of a really weird and bad position because you can still if you take if you think about it you can still try to get out of the pocket a little bit with this right so if you get that double team on that side you get out of the pocket you release this guy I mean you've got so much open uh, within this play now the reason I like this second setup is because a lot of people um, especially if they know that you like to run trips tight in they are going to give you some cover zero or some some simple man concepts right they're gonna run some man coverage on you. Well, with this, you're going to see here that, you know, now obviously your crosser is going to get open against man, but your deep post route, if, if Brady can make a throw, it's going to get open. Um, you're going to have your deep post. And so this play just really gives you kind of a play that, again, it's just another way to run this, but it's kind of a sneaky way to run it if you think about it because they're not going to be expecting the crosser. They're going to be saying, oh, he's running mesh, and then you're just doing this right here. And... I can't tell you how much, how much, um, how big of an importance it is to put backfield master or backfield mismatch on your player. Um, you're going to have a lot of success with that. And then again, you still have your bailout, uh, bailout delay fade. You can obviously uh, throw the ball away because if you throw the ball away, it's, you've got two flats, two people in the flat on both sides, so you're not going to get penalized for that. I mean, there's a lot of benefit to this second setup. Um, I'll tell you what, Stefan Gilmore is like playing out of his mind in this video. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, uh, as far as match goes, uh, you know, this is a really good play for match. Um, match is not going to be able to handle this. So I'm just going to go to a standard match concept here. And what you'll see is he gets wide open. So they're going to have to use the crosser no matter what. Most of the time people are going to say, you know, you know, the, if, if they play trips tight in at any, to any degree, they're going to be like, you know what? I don't have to use the crosser because I have 30 yard flats, right? 
or I have Code 4 drop. Well, it's not exactly the case. Obviously, if you have Stephon Gilmore, I guess you can do whatever. Um, but the reality is it's really not the case. You know, you're going to be able to hit this a lot. Obviously, you still have a check down. You have a slant. So take your slant. Um, you have a delay fade. You know, take the delay fade if it's not there. I love the protection from this. This is really one of the key reasons why I like running this play. I feel like the protection is really good, and then I can easily just hit that, you know. And again, that's just a really hard play to guard. It's basically the trip side inversion of PA but over, in my opinion, a little bit better because you can't guard the crosser with a 30-yard flat zone. That's really the, the real powerful point uh, of this offense. So thanks for watching the video. Real quick, if you want to get the guide, there's a link down in the comments and in the description. You can get the entire guide for just $15, um, one-time purchase. And then also, uh, I did want to quickly draw attention to my Patreon. If you haven't joined the Patreon yet, that's where you get access to everything, unlimited access to everything, every ebook that I've released in Madden 22 and will release in Madden 22. So far, we've released 10 ebooks, three offenses, and seven defenses. So if you want to get access to that, uh, again, that is going to be linked down below. It's just $10 a month, and you can cancel it whenever you want. As long as your subscription is active, you get unlimited access to everything. We'll see you guys later.